Hello everyone out in YouTube land. Well, I got another video, a very short one this time. Over the weekend I uh, wandered through an antique shop in New London. And um, I was down in New London for the annual uh, sale fest that they have uh, in town. And it's about 10 miles from where I live. And um, I uh, walked through this antique shop, uh, which has three floors in one of the downtown buildings and uh, I located a few items uh, you know took pictures of a few items I should say I didn't buy anything um, and when I go through these antique shops I like to look at old radios but lately the last few years at least five years anyways there hasn't been any real radios or anything of any uh, interest and of course I, as you know I do not have a workshop at this time so I'm not going to take on anything uh, that's just going to be stored and, and it doesn't make any sense. But I always like to look in uh, these shops and so forth. So there, there were some items in there that I did photograph and uh, there may be some interest to uh, you uh, people out there that are my age or even older that may remember some of these items and it's nice to look at these items. I didn't spend a lot of time in the uh, antique shop uh, but I, what time I did spend there uh, I photographed what I thought was fairly interesting. Um, so I want to share these with you. It's not a very long video, but if I don't uh, stop flapping these ugly gums here, this video is going to be longer than uh, uh, the part that I want to show you. So let's get started with the show right now. And this is the antique shop. I'm just wandering around. I like going in these places and sometimes you might find something. I like looking at the old radios and the old stuff and things. Sitting alone in an old rocking chair. And that bellows for getting the fire going in a fireplace. It's an unusual looking couch or chair or whatever you want to call it. Looks real old. Man, my eyesight ain't too good. It'll show up better on the video. It looks like seven ninety-five, and it ain't seven dollars and ninety-five cents either. I wouldn't pay that, even if I had that kind of money. Hmm. Holy mackerel! That's some oil can. Old Brunswick. There's an old cultivator like my dad used to have years ago. Many, many years ago. I was just a little tyke, I was probably about five, six years old when he had something like that. That looks like something my grandmother used to have. Boy, look at that old ringer. That's a ring close out. Well, that goes back before my time, that's for sure. We used to have the old ringer washers, but uh, that was mounted on the washer itself. This is real old. This goes back to, oh, I don't even know how many years that goes back, but that's an oldie. You remember stoves like this? I do. <clears throat> the old top desk. Some little kid must have got some enjoyment out of that many years ago. One of the items, not necessarily uh, from the antique shop, but since we're on the subject of antiques, is this little uh, uh, battery tester here that I bought quite a few years ago from a yard sale. So I thought this was quite appropriate because this is, uh, this is an antique. There's no doubt about that. And it has a, a little pin on the bottom. You put your tester uh, that terminal on the on the battery and then you got the other lead that you just uh, hold on to the uh, other part of the battery this would be the positive because there's the red up there and uh, this would be the negative right here and then you'd get your readings right on there 
it's made by sterling it goes up to 50 volts so it would probably be used for batteries up to 45 volts those 45 volt um, uh, B batteries and uh, probably the 22 and a half volt C batteries and so forth that they used in the old tube radios portable tube radios though this may not be an antique uh, as per se um, I've had this for quite a few years I bought this in the early 70s in a second hand shop and uh, I, it's a load tester for 6 and 12 volts you crank down the nut over here it puts this loading coil on the storage battery your car battery and uh, it's very effective it puts on the equivalent of a st average starter current so you can test your car batteries and this thing gets pretty hot because it's uh, obviously a resistance load well not really maybe a real antique but it is an oldie when they made tools when black and decker was quality I got this at a yard sale I think for two bucks about three years ago and you can't stall this big guy he is powerful and I'll tell you it's heavy too no black and decker seven and a quarter inch skill saw another item I have out here in my shed is um, this is uh, like the black beauty soldering irons this is the kind of a soldering iron that you would use for soldering components to a radio chassis it takes something like this to really put the heat out I have a couple of these. Uh, this one I picked up at a yard sale last year for a buck and um, has the original cord on it and everything. Um, the other ones are all put away from my workshop stuff in storage. But uh, since we're on the subject of antiques, I thought I'd throw these things in here on this video at the same time. And lastly, but not least, is my first digital camera I ever got in 1999. It's not even one megapixel, but it cost me 400 bucks at Sears. I still got the camera. This is the box for it here out in the shed. I still got the camera and it works just fine. It uses the smart media cards. But I guess by today's standards, that is an antique. Well, I hope you enjoyed the little tour of uh, the antique shop and the uh, little antique things that I had here. I'm going to go in the house and get a cup of coffee. I'll see you all later.